But let's jump in with our biggest surprise. And Nick, we'll go to you here first. Biggest surprise on the 53 man roster. Yeah, and people might freak out when I say this, but Daniel Hardy making the 53. And obviously, watching his preseason, you're like, whoa, why is that a surprise? I just didn't think that with the addition of Taylor, also having Dominique Robinson, who I, you know, predict to make the roster, that there just wouldn't be a spot for Hardy. But I think that just goes to show the type of preseason he had, what he was able to do in training camp that. You know, the Bears obviously want to keep him, and obviously there's going to be some moves in the next coming days, so we'll see if this roster adjusts a little bit. But Daniel Hardy making the 53, good for him to show the progress he's made since he's been here with the Bears. Yeah, I, I, I'm i going to actually have to double up on that as the biggest surprise, just to keep six defensive ends, especially after making the trade that they made the other day uh, with Taylor adding, adding to the team. I, I think that, um, you know, I alluded to it over the weekend that I, I – Changed my mind since Thursday. I thought Dominic Robinson would make it, but that seemed to make Daniel Hardy the odd man out, but they end up keeping him here. I don't know that it'll stay that way. Um, it seems like a lot of the ends to carry here, but you know, they, they got to find that rotation and find that guy that's, uh, you know, when you got talented guys that you want to work out and sort through. Plus when you bring a new guy in, Granted, we've had this conversation before. We saw Khalil Mack do it. Now, Khalil Mack was an amazing specimen, but uh, it is pass rusher. You can, it's pretty easy to come in and play right away and be like, uh, yeah, just go forward and go get the, set the edge and go get the quarterback. But there are going to be some, some learning curves there. Um, so maybe that factored into it as well. Yeah, so I'll move over to my biggest surprise. I'm happy for Daniel Hardy. He was somebody I was really pounding the table for after the last week. Uh, you know, to me, if you're going to make plays at camp and in preseason games, you're going to execute and do what the coaches ask you to do. You should be rewarded for that. But it also speaks to the depth of this team. That's something we've talked about here these last couple preseason games. The depth is really starting to stand out. And I think when you look around the league and see some familiar cuts from other teams, of players that have just recently played for the bears, you know, Robert Tunyon and kill Harry. Uh, you had a couple more guys, you know, uh, from some other teams, um, uh, De Deontay Foreman. And, um, there was another name that I'm missing too, that were just making the roster of Byron Pringle, you know, that, that just were on the bears where they were locks to make the team the last couple of years. And now they can't even be a backup or a third string, uh, for other teams around the league. So speaks to the bears depth, but my surprise of the day is certainly Greg Stroman uh, getting cut. I thought that might mean that Reddy Stewart would wiggle his way into the roster. It doesn't, unfortunately. It looks like they only kept 10 defensive backs by my count here. Uh, I thought maybe Jalen Jones and Reddy Stewart might be battling for that last spot. I, I think Jalen Jones has been scrappy the last couple of years to, to stick on this roster. Um somewhat of a dependable uh, veteran, you know, defensive back on this team the last few years. But I really have enjoyed what I've seen from Reddy Stewart here at training camp. That being said, Greg Stroman has also been a very solid backup on this team here the last couple of years during the season at camp, physical cornerback, and they completely let him go. He's going to have the opportunity to find his way on another roster, and I think he will. Uh, so, you know, that, that secondary unit is loaded. And everybody that's on that list certainly deserves a spot on this roster. And now we hope that Reddy Stewart can make it through waivers and make it to the Bears practice squad because I just really think of a guy in terms of development that you really have something there with him. So hopefully he didn't shine too bright in that week four preseason game against the Kansas <clears throat> Chiefs. Yeah, and again, more times than not, these guys do end up clearing waivers because when you claim them, you have to put them on your 53. And, um, yeah, you know, they got to know the defense. They got to know the scheme. They got to know everything. They got to be actually ready to go. So most times that ends up, um, not being the case and they end up, you know, come back. We will talk about guys that are, uh, you know, prime candidates come back to the practice squad. Uh, you know, I just wanted to add on to that defensive end discussion. Jacob Martin got put on IR with the return designation. So not only are they keeping mm -hmm. all these defensive ends, but that's another guy who they're technically not letting go. Who can yeah. be back, you know, in a month or so as, as well. So they, they're, they're keeping themselves Nick with a lot of options here at defensive end opposite of Montez sweat. 
Yeah, and I think that makes a lot of sense for Jacob, too, because this is a guy that was with that first team defense, was starting there when Demarcus Walker would kick inside. And that was Jacob Martin's job for a little bit until he got injured. So seeing that the injury wasn't significant enough that he would be on long term IR and can come back, um, I think is a good sign for the Bears. And obviously that that's going to change the roster when that time comes. But, yeah, he was doing some good things. And, you know, that Eric Washington talked, you know, highly of Jacob Martin. So it's good to see that at least he, he will have a season to play here in Chicago when his time is ready. There's a couple of roster finagling spots we have to talk about. The one is uh, I'll give Biggs credit for this because he reported it. I, I, the, the answer one of us certainly would have given for biggest surprise is Kari blasting game mm-hmm. getting cut, but Biggs did report that that's part of some roster finagling that he will most likely be back tomorrow. He's a vested veteran, so he has to be released and can immediately sign with another team. But it sounds like they have an agreement, uh, player and team, to just cut him for one day, come back tomorrow. Um, And the reason for that is you can only have two players designated for return. Now this is a new rule this year. Has to be done at the time the 53-man roster uh, is set. Can't be done like a day before. Um but you can designate two guys to return right away. And that is Larry Borum and Jacob Martin, but they had this Patrick scales issue scales has Mm -hmm. been out since the hall of fame game. So they actually have three guys they needed to designate for return. So by doing this, they can make that scales IR move tomorrow and bring blasting game back. That'll be set. However, the follow-up question, the obvious follow to that is who the hell's the long snapper then? Um, Because Cameron Lyons was waived today. Now, this was something I thought would actually happen, believe it or not. Um, long snapper is an interesting position because Cameron Lyons been with these guys for months now. He took all the snaps after scales got hurt. There is a chemistry thing there that does matter. No one's claiming a long snapper off of waivers, most likely. I guess it's possible, you know, if he looks elite and someone's got a, a, a big problem and they're like, oh, let's add this guy and he's definitely going to be our week one guy. That would probably be the scenario that it would happen. So maybe it is possible, but most likely Cameron Lyons will either be signed to the practice squad by tomorrow and you can get him back out there and practice and still be your long snapper between now and the actual game when he can then be elevated um, or they go out and sign another veteran that might be out there. So that's why I thought Cameron Lyons would definitely be uh, waves here because you can always go out and sign somebody last minute or just at that position specifically, or you can just elevate him from the practice squad um, as you get to the actual game. And that's an option too. So um, that's enough long snapper talk there, but it is an interesting, <laughs> that is an interesting scenario that hasn't really come up before with just trying to have to figure out how to carry a long snapper on mm-hmm. this 53. Well, and so it's reported that scales won't return until end of October, right? Isn't that what big said in that report? So that if that's true, I mean, that's, that's a big hit, you know, it's an, it's an underestimate. I don't think people will appreciate it, but you should in the, the city that uh, Patrick Manley once owned here in Chicago, Mm -hmm. like you should appreciate long snappers and their contribution to the 53 man roster. So that's definitely something uh, interesting, and him not being at camp the last few weeks was certainly of note. I know sitting with Gary in the stands, it was like every day is like, "Where's Patrick Scales?" and and um, now now we got our answer. He's going to be out a while. So you're saying for the players that are injured and designated to return, those names were the three: Larry Borum, Larry Borum, and uh, Jacob, Jacob Martin. Martin. Jacob Martin. So what is the word with? with Ryan Bates then who's also been out with injury and he makes the roster, but they haven't given any clarification on when he's going to return. No, my understanding on that though is, um, he's not necessarily guaranteed to be back for the Titans game, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get any sense that that might be like a month long thing into the season, which is because remember, if you go on IR, you're going to miss four games, right? Mm -hmm. So he might just be, you know, any other player you have on your roster during the season that ends up on the injury report 
and perhaps isn't active on game day because he's hurt. That ha- Remember, that happens every week throughout the season. You're going to have injured guys on your 53. That's now, basically where Ryan Bates is right now. Now you have eight spots for the whole season where you can IR a guy with a designation in return, but only two that you can do right now. So, yeah. so let's mm-hmm. say it is more serious than, than it is. So that means they'd have to wait till week one is over to make Ryan Bates an IR designation to return. I don't know. Okay. Let's, this is good. This is good. We need to explain this because it has gotten complicated. Okay. So today you can designate two guys to return with that tag to keep them on your, to, to make that move on the same day as the 53. So they don't take up two spots on your 53 today. Like they used to have to do. And then you would make the IR move tomorrow going forward. You don't have to designate to return anybody. Okay. You can just put guys on RAR. You're allowed to bring eight back. Okay. okay. Um, and technically, these two guys that went on today don't have to ever come back. But sure. so you still have eight other options. But if these one of these two players that got put on IR today does come back, that does count against your eight. Does that make sense? Yes. That but so sense. cleared it up. So, for instance, um, Scales, when he goes on IR tomorrow, it won't have a designation to return to it. But in a month or so from now, when they elect to bring him back, that's when it'll count as one of those IR to return guys. Yeah, I get it. This rule seems to change every single year. You know, I think it's good for the game. You're just trying to keep... There's no point in sense. You used to sometimes have to, like... Guys would be out for the year when they really only had to be out for a month. But because exactly. of the roster yeah. problems, like you sometimes had to do it to like guys that maybe weren't starters. And that's just, nobody wants that. Nobody needs that. So it, I do appreciate that they're making these efforts, but it does get confusing for the fans. Yeah, no doubt. You know, Zach Pickens is another guy to maybe look at around here. He's also dealing with an injury. He obviously made the roster like Bates, but yep. we have to see what his status is going to be moving forward, especially towards that week one game against Tennessee. <laughs> Like the mayor, 